welcome to the uh, seminar on artificial intelligence in vocational education and training. So we have um, Prof. Michael uh, Hessler from the University of Bremen Institute Technic and uh, Build. Uh, so he will be talking to us about artificial intelligence, uh, something that is topical. It's good to see you, Ian, and I'm sure that you have a, a lot to, uh, to say about that. <laughs> so uh, Professor Michael is a full professor and chair of technical and vocational education and training at the University of Bremen in, 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 in Germany and head of Institute of Technology and Education, a research unit of the university. So it's, it's like our real center, you know. I'm an advocate for our real moving from being a center to becoming an institute. Um, he's a board member of the European uh, Research Network Vocational Education and Training and founded the International Journal for Research in Vocational Education and Training. So colleagues, you have no excuse not to publish. Uh, you, you have the avenue now and um, which is indexed in Scopus and uh, Web of Science. Those, those are the databases that we are highly using for some of our bibliometric studies. So please uh, uh, continue to support this journal. Professor has been conducting projects for the German Agency for International Cooperation, GIZ, and has provided scientific support on the internationalization of vocational education and training to the German Federal Minister of Education and Research. His current research projects deal with Industry 4.0 and the use of uh, AI in TVET, developments of vocational education systems in international comparisons, uh, skills shortage, uh, shortages in the context of the global workforce migration, and occupational skills requirements and supply in the socio-technical transition uh, process of decarbonization. So welcome, uh, Prof, and uh, if you can just uh, put your hands together, colleagues, for, for our Prof. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you, Ruben, for the introduction, and thank you to you all to be here. It's a great pleasure uh, to be in Johannesburg here at the university and to talk with you about artificial intelligence. <clears throat> um, it is easy, or it's more, more used to talk about a topic uh, where you already know the answers. Yeah? So you can be really the expert and say, we have explored that and that function better than that. In artificial intelligence, it's um, for us at least uh, totally different. <clears throat> we have started with this topic in a, in a European project about three or four years ago, just first exploring with, with which possibilities are there for us in, in TVET to deal with RE, what, what, what happens there, what, what is coming up. So, and um, this project was ending last year, <clears throat> and then we applied for a second project. That was before ChatGPT came up, yeah? After ChatGPT came up, uh, everybody wrote a re research proposal for uh, artificial intelligence, but the good thing for us was we were before the wave, yeah? So we got already the acceptance for our project, and this is now at the moment running. And what we are doing in our actual new project is, it's called Artificial Intelligence Pioneers. So we are searching for pioneers, we are searching for people in education, but also in politics and administration in the TVET field, who are yeah, a step in advance, who are already trying and finding solutions for uh, working with artificial intelligence. <clears throat> So this, this network is at the beginning, RE Pioneers, it's, it's just started. And um, within this network, I have an overview about the partner countries which are there in our project, like Spain, Portugal, Greece, um, UK, France. And a surprising, or not, an information maybe for, uh, before is that we are not in a high developed status in TVET at, this, at the moment uh, about artificial intelligence. That is my perspective. Yeah? Um, we don't have yet implemented solutions. Uh, it's a challenge which is in front of us, which is already there. Everybody who is teaching knows it. Um, 
suddenly the, the written texts are much better than before and you ask what happened yeah, to this student, why he improved so good, so fast and yeah, he found the way to prompt in chat GPT. Yeah. Um, and yeah, maybe I guess the same happened to you that uh, examinations were given to, to professors and asked what would you grade on this examination then they said in social science for example they said wow I would give uh, a good grade it's even better than than the, than than what I get, see normally yeah so you are all, all touched already it's not something which is uh, uh, future thinking we, we are all inside that but at the moment I would say we, we don't have yet really a hand on this topic that we can say it's like that or that or here I use it and uh, that is a better and, and a less uh, good solution. So that is a pre-opening, yeah? Um, that is the context. So we are, we are talking here... Okay, we are talking here about something which is brand new, yeah? Uh, I guess f maybe for you as well, maybe there are already some experts. And the second uh, pre-word pre is you can look on the topic from different perspectives, yeah? Sure. You can ask also, for example, is the topic intelligence a right framing for what happens there, yeah? Because artificial intelligence is just working with probabilities, yeah? Is probability really uh, uh, intelligence? So that, that is another, another perspective. I, coming from a very pragmatic point of view, and I ask the question, where and how can we use artificial intelligence in TVET? Yeah, so where are the fields where we can use it and um, which scenarios are possible, which are maybe future scenarios, but also which solutions, solutions are already there and are already in use, yeah? And that makes, between countries, that makes big differences. Um, some countries are, for example, learning analytics much more in advance than, than other countries. So that is a bit to give you the framing. Um, is it right that, that this is one hour? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? yeah. So if you have questions, ask immediately. <laughs> yeah? uh, if something is unclear, if you want to comment something, if you want to criticize something, if you say, no, I have another idea or I have an example, uh, please go in directly inside um, and just give me a, a sign and then I'm, I'm pleased to hear what, what you are sharing to this, uh, to this seminar. So this is our Institute uh, Technology and Education and on the right side This tower is a drop tower. So a drop tower means you make an experiment, you put it up in the air and then it falls down. And in this moment when it's falling down, it is without graffiti. So that means we can make here experiments um, which you normally just can make uh, outside uh, of the earth because there's no graffiti. Yeah? There are only three drop towers in the world. One is in Bremen, my city. The second is in the United States and the third is in China. So, and we are just situated at the drop tower and therefore the address of my institute is at the drop tower. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> here a picture about stupid robots. Um, we, we said, in the, it's a picture from the automotive industry, we said we have to put the robots into a fence. Yeah. because they are dangerous, yeah? They, they know their way, what they have to do, and they move, and if there, is a, if, if there is a man, they just move and cut your head, yeah? So we, we said the robots have to be in a fence, yeah? That was the robots without artificial intelligence. That was the robots just with automatization. The, the new robots, we don't name them robots anymore, and that is not future work. What, what I'm telling about that. Last year, Festo have published the first industrial cobot. And cobot means corporation robot. So these are robots who are um, not cutting your head. They, they help you. They are like a third, a fourth, a fifth hand, and you cooperate with them. 
Um, they are tangible and they are learnable. Also, the programmatic is different uh, than with the, with the old stupid robots. And what we, what we are doing here, this picture is from a, from a project, um, what we are doing about is uh, we are here without, uh, um, um, <coughs> with augmented reality, we try to communicate and to interact with this computer, yeah? So that the computer is learning how to behave when he is communicating with different persons. So this is, this is cobot, this is, uh, uh, and for this kind of reaction, Automatization is not enough. You, you need, you need um, a, a robot who is able to make on some calculations decisions. So that is, that is an, an, um, an, an ongoing project and there we are not far of artificial intelligence, we are, we are quite inside. Um, yeah. So, First, I want to give a, a, short, a short overview about what means artificial intelligence. So classic, the, the, uh, a kind of definition. So what is part of a uh, artificial intelligence? The second is, is if we think about artificial intelligence in TVET, how big is it? How is the range and how important is it for TVET? The third, I want to talk about scenarios. So scenarios is like um, a perspective into the future, yeah? So which scenarios for, for RE impl Im implementation in TVET would be possible? But then the fourth, I want to go to the reality. So what we have already, what is already there and what we can already use. Then um, <coughs> on, the, on the fifth point, connectivity, um, we just had a talk uh, with the colleagues from the technical education about uh, vocational education and training is all about connectivity, all about cooperation. Yeah? So it might be the cooperation between the company and the school. It might be the cooperation between education and technology. Yeah? So it's all about <laughs> connectivity. That is the overall purpose, the overall challenge of TVET. Um, and with this respect, uh, another, another look on, on RE. Then a, a short look on the impact and uh, finally sure also about the problems of which we have with RE. So the first, um, expert systems. Yeah? Artificial intelligence is not something new. Yeah? It, is, uh, it is existing in the form of expert systems already since a longer time. I will give you an example. The second, which is at the moment producing the hype is machine learning, that is that the machines are uh, producing and uh, calculating data and producing their own patterns out of the data, machine learning. The third, natural language processing is also very important because this is how the computer understands us. For a long time it was not possible um, to make good translation from one language to another language because language is a very fussy uh, um, data, yeah, it's not like Excel data, it's very fussy and to translate was, was a long time a problem until into the first translation um, um, uh, machines they used artificial intelligence which can build better patterns and this natural language processing is every time uh, necessary if we talk with a machine so that this machine is able to understand us. So the, the one is the, the talking, the language, but the other is computer vision, the, the picture. So if you have, for example, a car driving in the street, yeah, and the car should drive without a driver, there must be vision. Yeah? They, must, they have to see the environment, they have to see the people walking. So that is computer vision and robotics, just an example what I've um, shown before. And now an expert um, system, just to remind how old this is, in October 1989, there was Czech was like for us or for, for people, so like a high discipline. Yeah, in, in, in the game Czech, there is strategy inside. You have to calculate in advance. You have to calculate what is the other person doing and how could I react if he's doing that? How can I react? You have rules there. So um, chess, chess 
uh, was at the, at the beginning an interesting field for artificial intelligence. And in 1989, the, with the uh, deep thought, they, they first tried and they were able to beat uh, a Czech a master, but then Kaparov came and he won totally and the machine lost all games against Kaparov. This picture is Kaparov. But then in 96, IBM came with this deep blue, I guess you remember, yeah? And that was the first time in 96 when the machine was beating the grandmaster Kaparov with an expert system, yeah? Just by calculations, not by intelligence, but just by calculations. So we are talking about something which is at least 30, 40 years already in development. It's, as it's not it's not totally quite new. Yeah? And um, developments like this, also like automatizations, developments like this all times produce also fears. Yeah? And, and the, the biggest fear is every time, do we need human beings anymore if, if the machines take over? Yeah? So I, I don't know if you have the discussion of the 70s in mind when we went into automatization. And we thought, oh, now automatizations, the machines are doing all the work and we don't need workers anymore. The opposite happened, yeah? We need workers still and we need higher skilled workers. So it's, it's not that these kind of technology revolutions make uh, human beings um, unnecessary, yeah? So, but now we have the same situation 50 years later, like in the 70s. Now we have another thing which, which brings value but also fears, yeah, and, and this is now, um, yeah, and when, and, and in 96 when the computer was first time beating the master man, uh, Kaparov, there was a big fear around, but then there was nothing coming, how, how, to, tr how to use artificial intelligence, therefore the, 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 the uh, uh, attention for the topic went down again. But these expert systems, this is a paper from 2004, yeah? So in medicine, they used expert systems, for example, for detection of cancer. And in this paper, they were evaluating uh, an expert system in comparison with human expert. Yeah? To, to know, is this expert system as good as experts would rate? Yeah? And, and in case of cancer, it is really serious, yeah? uh, the question. So in this, this paper in 2004, yeah? Um, already evaluated such kind of expert system. So, to show you the, the topic of expert system is even if everybody now is talking about machine learning, yeah, expert systems are still there and they are used. They are, they, this is not future, this is, this is actual. Yeah. But now what makes the hype is this. Yeah. Here with uh, chat GPT, <coughs> Um, this is, this is uh, if you go to, uh, to Google, you can, you can search which, which words are uh, running, yeah? Who's, who, uh, how many, how many um, people are searching for such kind of words. And artificial intelligence jumped up and just in 2022. And that was the new thing. Everybody of us was able to use uh, a machine with this. ChatGPT. So if we talk about uh, artificial intelligence in relation to TVET, um, the question of the range, yeah? So we can on the one side think about how can artificial intelligence um, support us in our education processes, also in education administration also in education system buildings. So how, how can artificial intelligence support us in this education work? So it's about learning, teaching, assessment. The, the second is how is artificial intelligence already enhancing work? Yeah? There are new jobs coming up like robotic process automatization or uh, an, uh, um, for machine learning or for deep learning, how to train machines. There are new jobs coming up with specialized on artificial intelligence and like the cobots, what I said before, that you're using or working already with objects using artificial intelligence. But the, the third point is also RE enhance social life. 
Yeah? So, and that depends now on your understanding of vocational education and training. Our understanding of vocational under, uh, education and training in Germany is that we not only make skilled workers, yeah, that we also um, educate these people so that they can take responsibility in the society, that they are able to make decisions and um, take their place as citizens in, in the society. So TVET is not only about preparing people for the labor market, that's our understanding, it's also uh, like all education do, um, to on the one side integrate but also on the other side giving the critical potential for people living in the um, social society. So and there's another, another challenge, yeah? What, what happens with this uh, society if artificial intelligence is going more and more inside? Yeah? Like um, things like faked, deep fake pictures, deep fake uh, communications, deep fake videos and all that. What happened with the society? Um, that is the same topic like we had with digitalization of the society, but on a mo much more intensive um, way. So, TVET, I guess, has to care for all three parts. And, and we in TVET, we, we should not think just about IE enhanced work. We should also think about what is IE doing with our society and how to prepare people for this change in the society. Nevertheless, now in the next slides, I will just talk about this field. <coughs> about RE enhanced education, yeah? Um, the others need, would need more time and, uh, and, and a different focus. But just to say, TVET is not just what I'm presenting now, it's wider, yeah? But nevertheless, I have to focus, so I will focus now on, on RE implica uh, uh, applications in the, in the education and training field. So, coming to that now, artificial intelligence in TVET, Importance, yeah. Um, artificial intelligence and vocational education training has the potential to enhance the learning experience, address skill gaps, improve efficiency, and ensure that education remains relevant in a rapidly changing job market. As technology continues to advance, its role in that is likely to become even more critical in preparing individuals for successful careers. Wonderful definition. And this definition is done by ChatGPT. <laughs> I was just asking, what is the importance of, TV, of artificial intelligence in TV? And he brought up that, yeah? And I thought, wow, okay, good, good answer, yeah. Um, the importance now you will also see on the scenarios and on the applications which are new, now coming. Yeah? So about the scenarios, if we take a very simple um, classification about education and say, okay, we have on the one side the macro level, the national level, the system level. Yeah? What can artificial intelligence do on this level of the education system? So the, the first is labor market. We need information about the labor market to quantify which occupations we need, how much occupations we need, in which region we need which occupations. And these occupations, which skills are needed. Yeah? So we need, we need labor market uh, information. And here, to get information about the labor market, artificial intelligence can help. Um, the second is curriculum development on a national level is all time very time consuming. Yeah? A lot of people are coming together, discussing developments in, in the field based on, hopefully based also on labor market data and then developing out of these profiles and curricula. In this process of developing, um, artificial intelligence can help. 
So on the macro level, there are at least these two scenarios really clear where artificial intelligence can support. The second level, on the meso level, the level of institutions and organizations, you see there are already a lot of, um, of possible scenarios. Yeah? Management support. Every institution, educational institution, has to deal with a lot of data, with a lot of communication, emails, talks, plans have to be done. Yeah? So all this um, work in an, in an institution, all this management work, yeah, uh, can strongly be supported by artificial intelligence. Curriculum development for the learning venues. So you're starting with a national curriculum, but then you have to break down this curriculum to your own institution and to your own career and to your own classroom. You have to adapt it, you have to make it practical for hours and for a concrete situation. On this process, also for organizations, uh, artificial intelligence can be helpful. In the past, the, all the teachers produced their own curricula and their own classroom training. Yeah? Um, maybe here, artificial intelligence, because also of time constraints, it's just not possible to discuss all ideas with the colleagues because you also have to do the training in the, in, the, in, the, in the colleges. But here also artificial intelligence could maybe bring the people together and make plannings for a group and not only for the individuals. Um, learning experience platforms is the next generation of learning management systems. So all, all universities, I guess all schools, uh, at least after, after COVID, are using some places where they store their materials or where they have um, management of courses, um, where you can communicate, where you get your exercises. So the, all the tools we used to, um, to overcome this uh, COVID time. So learning experience platform are not just giving data, learning experience, uh, platforms are adapting to the learner. That is the difference. Yeah? They're adapting to the learner in the question of which content is the learner using. We are actually in the project at the moment uh, about um, uh, logistics in, in Harbor. A colleague of me, she is very strong involved there, logistics in Harbor. And there they are setting up a platform for um, logistics occupations which should be adaptive, so that the learning, per, that for each person in this um, uh, learning experience platform is their own learning pathway uh, possible. The next, um, authentic learning and testing environments. So that is about um, augmented reality, mixed reality simulations. Yeah? Um, we are already using that, we were just talking this morning about simulations in, in electrical engineering or also mechanical engineering. We are all using these uh, environments already. Um, and these environments, if they are adaptive, or we can also use them for assessment uh, with RE support. Um, the next portfolios. Portfolios is a, is a very good tool to engage uh, self-directed learning. Um, and we are skipping at the moment very strongly from classical portfolio to electronic portfolio because it's much easier to, to handle. Um, the, the students are much more in favor to work with an electronic portfolio than with a classical, and it's easy to share it. So, but also the, the problem of this e-portfolio is for a teacher, you have a, a big amount of data and how to rate it, how to evaluate that. And this task can, can be took over by artificial intelligence. Yeah, and the, la the, the last is about learning analytics for the evaluation of skills profiles. Um, it's, I think it's now something like five or six years ago, long time, I was talking with a colleague from the University of Helsinki in Finland about learning analytics. And he said, we have that already implemented in our university. So we, we, we track every student 
how he's working, we see when they struggle and when they get problems, when they are behind their, their time schedule, uh, we, we, we talk with them, we consult them, we give them special support. That is five, six years ago. So um, the learning analytics is a field which is very, very far developed already. So that is the meso level, the level of institution and organization. And now the, the last level, um, micro level, <coughs> RE can assist us in our process of teaching and learning. Yeah? Um, I, I show you an example also. Um, and that is something what we are doing also actually in the, in the project now. We are going to the TVET colleges, to the technical uh, schools and ask the teachers how do you use uh, artificial intelligence yeah, in your classroom teaching? Yeah? Um, and it's, it's interesting uh, uh, how, how open and far they are already. So RE can assist the actors, the teachers, the learners in their teaching and learning process. And at least artificial intelligence is not only a medium which support me, artificial intelligence itself is, as I showed with the work, new, new occupations coming up, um, it's itself also a field of activity. So you can also specialize in artificial intelligence. Okay, that's about scenarios, and in the scenarios, we have even more, we have 22 scenarios, I reduced it. Um, and in these scenarios, you heard already that I said something is more advanced, something is at the beginning. Yeah? So now I'm, I'm coming to what is already there. So what is not dream work, what is already existing. Um, labor market involvement is already existing. So the labor market intelligence supported by RE, there is this company, Lightcoast, who is who's offering this service worldwide on the macro level. So that is already there. It's not under development, it's, it's already existing. On the meso level, automatization of administrative tasks is already existing. It's not future, it's already existing. And uh, here, um, I, I, I share the, the PowerPoint with you. Yeah? That, and that's the reason why I put all the that you can find it and, and, and also look by yourself. Um, and here, that's, a, that's an example from, in this case, a university which gave grants to scholars. And this selection and putting all the data together is an intensive and work where they um, need a lot of human power. Yeah? This can automatize by, uh, uh, by artificial intelligence. And they did it, yeah. The next of, um, of meso level, there are already learning management systems, as so the next generation, which have implemented artificial intelligence procedures, uh, like adopting um, content to the needs of the students. So that is not future work, that is already there. And um, yeah, the same with learning analytics. I, I already said that this is uh, already existing. This platform um, infrastructure is, is possible to do that. It's a tracking of the behavior of the people on this platform. Yeah. So how long they work on which task and um, which task they have solved and how they navigated through the platform and all that data is there and this data can be analyzed. And patterns can be identified. So the next um, about um, on the micro level, the support for teaching and learning, content generation, for example. Here I ask ChatGPT, please develop uh, a lesson for car mechatronics, second year, about topic blah blah. You can, you can, and that's also nice with ChatGPT, you can say, make it public. So you can develop something and just share it. 
if you go there, you will see my questions and the answers. Yeah. So, um, ChatGPT can develop training content for you. Can develop training um, plans for you. Yeah. Just try it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so this this topic of um, assistant. Yeah. And then another one, I don't know if, if you know it, it's, it's a really nice um, um, and free of cost application. The last point I said was artificial intelligence is also a professional field for itself, where we can qualify it and where we should also qualify ourselves. And IBM here is offering a platform, IBM Skills Build, where you can make courses, trainings about artificial intelligence without any, you don't have to pay anything. Has anybody of you already done a course there, maybe? No? So just look for IBM Skills Build and then you can really jump into, um, into um, the RE field as an occupation. Uh, it's clear, RE occupations is at the moment the most running uh, uh, growing sector of occupations. So to go into this field is never, never be a, 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 a mistake. Um, also about micro, um, I talked about this simulation artificial intelligence and I've just seen the wedding lever of the technical education and that was something also we, we, we used this is a virtual welding, yeah? it's not classical welding, virtual welding. And our question was, in our, in our research project was, um, how much supportive is this kind of welding? Or is it just a game? Yeah? Or is it really supportive? And you can save about 20% of time um, in, the, in the welding learning so it's on the one side saving time and on the other side, and that's also very important, safety. Yeah. Um, so our conclusion was this: this simulation is is really supportive for training of, of welding. So that's an example for simulation. Yeah. And this simulation of training you can also lose, use for assessment. Another um, another uh, example you can say simulation in a technical field. Okay, that's that's diff that's easy because the parameters are very stable. Yeah. Um, here, this simulation is training behavior because there's an art avatar, there's an artificial intelligence with which you work. It's analyzing your response and react on this response. There's not a, a, a person behind, there's an avatar which is uh, 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 based on, on artificial intelligence. He's interacting like ChatGPT, but in, in social situations. So simulations you can also use and all for learning and for assessment. Artificial intelligence based uh, for vocational education and training. So not future work, uh, it's, it's reality already. Um, yeah, and the next, the last, feedback. Feedback is also a very important uh, challenge for each teacher, trainer, um, especially now if you get uh, written papers or if you get papers you don't know if they are written by humans or by RE. Um, I not have tested this but Turnitin has, uh, has uh, produced uh, a tool which should be able to identify artificial intelligence uh, written texts. I'm not sure if it's working but okay. But on the other side uh, Turnitin is also helping for feedbacks. So giving feedback on, on um, research papers, uh, turn it in is also a good tool. Now with this plus uh, also identifying RE texts. By the way, can artif artificial intelligence, if you name it in an article, yeah, should you name it as a resource or should you name it as an author? Connectivity. So we have in Germany these vocational schools and we have the companies. 
There, the cooperation is very important, but we have also the intercompany vocational training centers. That is where apprentices from different companies go and they learn the skills they are not able to learn in their company because the company is too strong specialized and are not offering these skills. Yeah? Nobody knows that outside of Germany that we have these intercompany vocational training centers, but for me, they are the best part of our system. And the people who are working there, the trainers are teachers, and the teachers are trainers. So there you have really a, a fusion of the role teaching and, and training. It's very fantastic. So if we think about connectivity, it's about connectivity between these three learning venues. But learning venues, you have to think wider. A company mostly don't send the person immediately to the workplace. It's just in some cases too dangerous. They first send them to a training workshop inside training. Then they go to a workplace. So they are, in a company, you have at least two learning venues. Or if you go to vocational schools, a lot of schools are now learning something of some kind of e-learning platforms or classroom teaching projects. So there you also have different learning venues. And yeah, and here is now the the, the big challenge which we which we have and uh, um, people talking about the dual system in, in Germany, I call it parallel system, because there is no, not strong cooperation between the schools and the companies. They are working in the same direction, yeah, but they are not strongly cooperating. So this connectivity and cooperation is for all countries a challenge, and we have to think it a bit wider, not only about companies and school, we have to think it on this level of workplace, combination with training workshops, combination with project classroom teaching and e-learning. So, and let's see what um, uh, artificial intelligence is bringing here. And another, another challenge in our system is the, the relation to the pre-vocational education and training. We know that the, uh, the vocational education and training is strongly related uh, on, on the general education the ping, people bring inside. Yeah? And from these um, PISA uh, assessments, we know from some countries, people starting in, in TVET are on level one in, in reading and writing. So that means they are not able to understand texts. They are not able to produce texts. That means they are not able to be educated in, in TVET. Yeah? So this relation other to pre-vocational education and training and another relation to higher vocational education and training, a sector which is not yet existing in many countries. Is um, yeah, it's another challenge. So and give, to give you a picture about the intercompany vocational training, that's how, how they look like. So they have really heavy machines. For example, a vocational school would never be able to um, to uh, finance that. I jump to the impact and I go to the problems. So. What are the problems? Access and resources. Every time we are talking about the digital. Uh, uh, spread or the digital division, um, what are you doing if you don't have a computer? You have no access to artificial intelligence. So access and resources is a problem. Data protection and security. Um, ChatGPT say, please don't give personal data inside. Nevertheless, people are doing that. Um, so data protection and security, also yeah, ethics and bias. If an artificial intelligence get feed it, trained with data which has already a bias, then this artificial intelligence will react also with this bias. Yeah? Um, loss of human interaction, the same like in gaming, yeah? you're talking with a machine and not with a person. Quality of learning content, um, yeah. how to evaluate the quality. Skepticism and resistance, so that many people just say, no, I don't want that, or I don't make the next step of technology de uh, development. Changes in the workplaces will be, will come, will be there. Technology dependency, which raises as more technology we use. Lack of transparency in RE decisions. We don't know how they produce it. The owner of OpenRE himself said, we actually don't fully understand how this machine is operating and um, lack of adaptability to social skills. Another problem could be like um, uh, 
hat hallucination hallucination it's 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 it it means that the machine is producing something um, you say wow that's totally crazy yeah so uh, this artificial intelligence are producing sometimes uh, answers which are totally nonsense so if the people believe on that hallucinations yeah <clears throat> okay so that's about a bit uh, bringing you inside the topic of RE and TVET. And thank you for listening and questions if you are. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. The question now arises about what we might call hard or soft AI, or sophisticated or AI, I think the, not AI, sorry, AI. The, the buzzword in English at least now is artificial general intelligence as a possibility for, for machines. Now just by the way, that problem has never been resolved in human psychology, ever. Because I mean, some people might remember the debate in Piaget's theory about whether there is a general intelligence or and in, in, in old-fashioned cognitive psychology, that debate has never been resolved. So it's unlikely to have been resolved in relation to mach machine intelligence at this point. But there's a lot of claims being made about <coughs> the abilities of, of, of machines as being able to have artificial, uh, artificial general intelligence. And I suspect that you don't agree with that. And one very nice quotation from you that I wrote down here was to say, when, when uh, Deep Blue beats the world chess champion, it was about calculations and not about intelligence, which I think is spot on, I think. So I, I, I'd like you just if you don't mind, to talk a little bit about that distinction as you understand it as an ideology in our society uh, in relation to some of the issues that you put on the table. And if you can just go back one slide. Uh, I mean, I think, is it that slide? Sorry, it might be too flat. It was a list like that. No, it must be forward. Anyway, sorry, the word that I'm interested in is authentic. This is it. I think that every claim that you make there about both scenarios for the future that are potential in relation to AI and then your discussion of the reality is all very, very measured within the concept of soft AI, which is indeed possible, I would suggest. I'm interested in that word authentic. In this word of? Authentic. 
Ah, authentic, yeah, okay. Because if you ask chat GPT the question that you put to it, which I think was your answer was a few slides earlier, if you ask it that question, you'll come up with a very sophisticated answer of that kind based on all the training that has been done by that machine on itself in a sense. But if you ask it what counts as authentic education, chat GPT dissolves into complete chaos, okay? So, for example, if you ask ChatGPT, what is the content of this article? Let's say, for example, that cancer article. Or what is, what is the title of the article? What is the state of cancer detection? It will produce a very interesting answer for you. Mm -hmm. If you say, what is the key issue in the detection of cancer de detection? What, that, what ChatGPT tends to do is to come back and say, I'm afraid you haven't given me enough information to answer this question. Please will you give me more? And that's because it can't deal with hard intelligence. Sophisticated judgments on the basis of morality and that kind of thing. So I'm trying to set up that debate between soft and hard, which, which is a central debate in, in the discipline of artificial intelligence. And just ask you to talk a little bit more about your argument in relation to that issue. And I think that word authentic there is one of the words that you need to unpack it more carefully. Yeah. But again, thank you for the presentation. Yeah. Th thank you for your uh, uh, comments and for the question. Thank you. Interesting. Um, there, were, there were two brothers. And the one called Dreyfus and the other were called Dreyfus. <laughs> So the Dreyfus and Dreyfus. The one um, was um, um, ma mathematics, I think, or informatic. Mathematics or informatics. So he came from the, from the science. And the other was philosopher from these two brothers. And in the, in the 70s, they were thinking about what, what makes the difference between human intelligence and automatization intelligence, because it was already used in this time, the term. Yeah? And they set up a model of four levels where they say from beginner to expert. And this, this model, the Dreyfus Dreyfus model, even if it's old, it's really a good model. We also use it in education and in vocational education and training to describe the development from um, a beginner to an expert. Yeah? So from the expertise science, we say uh, a human being needs 10,000 hours to be an expert in the field. Yeah? Or you can also say 10 years. So after 10 years working with something, you're an expert. I'm now three years in RE, so I'm far away from being an expert. Yeah? Um, so the, the highest level they had was um, this expert level, and the lowest level was um, the beginner level. The, the beginner are characterized by following rules. Yeah? And that is what machines can do exceptionally good. You, you train them rules, and then they follow the rules. These are the, the robots I showed you. Yeah? But these are also in the expert systems. And also, as far as I understood how Deep Blue worked, it was a very simple system, just following rules, calculations. Yeah? Um, so the next, the next level is that you are able to change rules depending on the situation. That you see these rules are now right or these rules are now not right. That needs a different kind of expertise. Yeah? So that makes it already a bit difficult because now you have to evaluate a situation. Now we can say, okay, an artificial intelligence can see the environment, can collect data, can collect data about a situation like car driving and can make, um, can make decisions based on that. Or if you think about robotics playing football together, yeah? They are evaluating their environment, collecting data, and making decisions, producing new rules based on this, the second level. Okay, we, we can think about scenarios um, that this second level might be possible. So the, the, the third level is what um, 
what uh, Ira Engelström, uh, now I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit creative now in explaining this, this concept, but I would say, or Jack Gregory Bateson also were talking about different learning levels, yeah? So what, what is about if, if you are defining new rules for the context? So you're not defining new rules for a situation, you're defining new rules for the context. That, that is expensive learning, yeah? So you're developing something which is, which is not yet there, yeah? A new rule. Yeah, that is the question. Is, is, a, is a machine able to do that, to go over the data it has? Because it's everything based on data, everything based on patterns, on probability, on what the machine has learned. So it's all everything, but for this going beside a context, you you need um, you create you create a, a new a new context which is not yet there. So it cannot be grounded on data which you have. But artificial intelligence is grounded on data. I don't know if this gap can be solved. Yeah, and the next step, the the last step. The fourth step, and that is something my colleague interpreted the, the Dreyfus and Dreyfus model like this. He said it's about intu intu intuition, in intuition, intuition, yeah. So it is about what you say, you have a feeling in your, yeah. You feel, ah, that's okay, yeah. So that is, that is something which uh, goes belong real data that, that is, that is a, a, a full over pattern based on experience and based on judgment, based on morality. Yeah? So this fourth level, yeah, is a machine, would it be ever possible to, to come into this level? I don't know. So if, if I just take the four level of Dreyfus Dreyfus, then I would say the first and the second level, yes, but the third and the fourth level, I don't know how this should go, yeah? Because it, just on the basement, how it's operating, how it could deal with data which which is, are not there, yeah? Also, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, <laughs> any other questions, colleagues? Or oh, Ian, you, you want to just? Does else wants to say? Just, just wait. Um, so I see uh, Prof. Mabunga. Thank you so much.
and we would like to inform the platform what to do. But we don't have the skills, we don't have the, you know, the artificial, so that blue skill um, uh, uh, reference that you made for IBM, I think it's something for us to really explore, right? So, so th this is the challenge, that we, we like the affordances that it seems to bring specifically with adaptive teaching and then being able to follow the student, being able to see their weaknesses ahead of time, all that analysis and volume analysis, so that's great. But we don't like the content that it created because we we are involved. We we have we have the human intelligence of what good teaching is and we don't see it in that content. But the manipulation of that content is hard for us because we're coming from the uh, humanities. You know, we don't have the... So I think what, what I'm saying is, I foresee in the future, maybe it's us who needs to push this, um, that we're gonna need to produce more and more uh, graduates coming out of programs that are now combined and stand, uh, stand alone disciplines. I, you know, I, for us to really thrive into the future, I see the possibility of us really working closer to computer science or the designers, but we need to be able to inform them what we want, right? And they need to figure out whether the technology can be adapted to suit us. So <laughs> this is a, like a log on <laughs> head to head um, a challenge that I, I see. Um, yeah, I don't know whether this is helpful. So it's just a comment that I think we are in that problem. And, and we don't know yet what would be the ideal solution to do this. Um, it seems like we, we need years' time to build up the skill. Um, yeah. Yeah, this, this technology has f forced us now for expensive learning. Yeah. yeah, because the context which we need is not there. And we cannot continue with the context what, which we had. Yeah. <laughs> Also, for example, to say a student, here is an article, please make a summarize about the major, uh, about the central ideas. It's not anymore a topic you can give to a student. So we, we have to focus on a, on a new context to think about. Yeah? And one idea, I think there will be several ideas, yeah? but I guess one idea of this new context for education is a central problem in education, I would say, is that there is one teacher and there are 20 or 30 students or apprentices or whatever. It is the question how to, how to uh, divide the, the communication or, or the, the attention to the people. Yeah? And, and if you take the idea of project-based learning, yeah? so the, the people are self-directed learning in groups and then while they are doing that, the teacher has time to talk with people individual or giving individual, yeah? So to, to make the focus away from the teacher so that the teacher has the capacity for doing that, what he can or she can do at the best, counseling the, the person, yeah? So if the, if the students can get the content also with the communication through the AI machine, yeah? Then I have as a teacher or a trainer the possibility that I adapt to the person. Not, not the machine, the machine should just give the content and maybe good fitting to the person, but um, the, the, the individual talk and counseling to the student and to the teacher and looking on the gaps and looking and helping on that. I guess here uh, this RE can help that we shift from, from, from mass communication really to this individualization. An, an, an objective which we have in, in, in pedagogy since since the beginning of the 20s, yeah, with the reform pedagogy, yeah, but maybe this machine can now help that we get this free time uh, to really individualize our our performance to to the people where they need it and to to make it on the levels, yeah. That is something. Um, maybe this can now become more reality uh, uh, reality as it has been before with this support. Yeah. But uh, it's absolutely right. We are, we are now forced to learn how, how to live now with this support. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, first of all, for the presentation.
presentation. I, I was very pleased to see that never once did you present the AI as a threat to our existing world view. Um, and I think that for many of us in, this, in the education sphere, this whole AI chat GPT thing has actually come about and perceived as a threat. It's, oh my God, how am I going to be able to do assessments? You know, not how do I use this in order to do better or different assessments? And that's, I think, you show that there's a reality out there that it's already being, being done in this way, and we need to uh, adapt to it. And I mean, I think it's a massive paradigm shift for many of us. Uh, it's, it's akin almost to the difference between setting an assessment when the learner is going to be using an open book technology versus a closed book framework. It's completely different, and we have to now take a, take a paradigm step in order to change our way of thinking. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you was, it often seems to me that the word machine learning is unfortunate in its, in its connotation because it implies that the machine already had an innate sense of intelligence of some form and it now was increasing that by learning in some way. And that I think is, is scary to, to the man in the street because it sounds like there's this robotic takeover possible. If we could really present it more as a, as a data refinement process, it's not the machine learning, it's the parameters of the algorithm that are being tuned better and better, and that's hence giving us the strength to do decision making in a better way. It's not the machine, it's the algorithm, it's the data. And if we can get that idea across to people, I think it might help mm. to mystify the whole, yeah. the whole area. Yeah. That, that is about words and, and the meaning of words. Yeah? We just talked this morning about trade test. And if I think about a trade test, I think about a trade and the occupation and not a competency. So I was totally misunderstanding the trade test in South Africa, yeah? just because I have a different meaning of, of this. Mm -hmm. And we have learning is also producing a kind of, of meaning. Um, but learning is a, is a wide and fuzzy, fuzzy uh, term. We, we, we use learning also for behavioristic learning. Yeah? For example, in, in language training, that the pronunciation or voc vocabulary. Yeah? This is a very adaptive and, and very, um, yeah. And we use learning also for that if, if humans um, do it. So, and this is the kind of learning the computer is doing. He has a, a parameter and he's adapting to this parameter. Yeah? So, um, but if we go f to, to cognitive learning or constructive learning, then not, then it's not the right term. Yeah? So, um, but it would surely help if we take a different phrase yeah? so that the people understand what it means. Yeah? So if they hear learning and then they think about yeah, some, some kind of creativity or whatever, but that's not in. Yeah? It can simulate creativity, but it's not creativity. Yeah? Um, um, uh, you, can, you can say ChatGPT, ch write, write an, 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 a music, yeah, or make, make a poetry, but it, it just produces words uh, and would never be able to say this is, this is a nice poetry or this is a good or this is a deep or this is a creative, yeah, because it's just data. Yeah, also on the one side I agree because this white fuzzy b uh, term of learning uh, produces wrong images. But there's also one kind of learning which is the adaptive uh, or learning one as yeah, this very behavioristic, stupid uh, kind of learning which this machine is actually doing. Yeah. So it's, it's also, partly it's also the right term. But in the understanding, uh, we, we understand something different. And, and there is where the fear is coming from. Yeah. And also where we don't see the limitations because we are expecting something different. Yeah? Um, if you think, for example, in, um, in science we say um, deductive and inductive is uh, uh, possibilities which you can use for, um, for research. Yeah? This is allowed ways of conclusion. Yeah? Deductive conclusion, inductive conclusion. But we, before we are starting a research project, we are starting with adaptive uh, conclusions. And these are creative conclusions. Without these conclusions, we would never find problems. Yeah? Um, so a, a, com a, a computer a machine can do deductive and inductive, but, but not adaptive. 
and for learning, adaptive learning is a problem, but, but uh, it's producing knowledge. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was just thinking about also what you said um, and, and the, the fears which are coming up because of the terms we are using for that. Yeah. Also like the term intelligence. Let me start by saying a very great presentation. Actually, you've answered most of the issues I wanted to raise. But uh, let me just make one comment quite quickly. Um, I, I think it really helps um, uh, that you map up this presentation from the changes in, uh, in production line in the 1970s, you know, in automation. You know, some of us who grew up in those, those, those years, uh, what people are grappling with, with now and how things are presented now is almost identical to what happened in the 1970s. You know, when, when automatic, uh, automation started, it was as if, you know, man is not going to have uh, a role in the production line. The machines are going to take everything and we need to be scared. It's as if there's an Armageddon. We need to prepare ourselves to build bunkers now because AI is going to take uh, the whole world and it's presented as if it has already uh, dislodged itself from the influence of human beings. That is now independent. I mean, as we argue that maybe there's that possibility that we'll have a scenario where AI is taken over, they're more intelligent, they think more than us. But at this point, we still, it's, its evolution is, is still based on our evolution as, as human beings. And if you look at how AI is developing, uh, the improvement also reflect the improvement in human human being as you know the things that we've learned that uh, we're able now to manipulate our world, uh, our environment, you know, and we've learned a lot uh, since the seventies. So, so I, I just wanted to say the way you're presenting it that we're not yet there. Uh, that possibility exists, but uh, I don't think we're, we're yet there. And what we're still grappling with now is that as, as we improve the AI software, because it's still a software that gives AI this, so we, we improve it. We need to find ways and system of how then uh, the improvement are uh, mapped back into the different uh, parts of society, in teaching, in uh, managing some of uh, the risk uh, of how these changes manifest itself within our, our environment. So those are the things that are still within our grasp. Those are things that we still can manage. And yeah, that's just a comment. It's no, it's no question. You have answered most of my questions and really great presentation and thank you very much. All right, uh, colleagues. Uh, thank you, Mike, uh, for your presentation. Colleagues, um, it's so interesting to, to sit here and listen to the social scientists, you know, how, how, how the argument, the arguments goes, but, but the reality, colleagues, uh, whether we like it or not, the, the amount of data that we are harvesting, uh, it's it, it's going to change how uh, how we we view the world. So there's a lot of unlearning, and and relearning that needs to uh, to continue to happen, and uh, and and I really appreciate how Mike uh, uh, positioned the presentation. Uh, as some form of awareness versus uh, when you present in, 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 in technical terms. So I, I, I think it was, uh, it was not scary for colleagues and uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's well received. So we're looking forward, colleagues, for new applications that are going to be coming out. And, uh, but the reality is uh, AI is not going anywhere. It's going to be with us for a very long time. And, uh, but I like how also you did this levels when you, when you deal with some of these things, you need to be looking at the different levels, at the individual level, organizational level, and then also just looking at, uh, at the system level. So stay tuned for the next presentation, which starts at 2 o'clock, and uh, we will be looking at um, vocational uh, didactics, uh, basically. So it's, uh, all these colleagues is about uh, responsive uh, pedagogies. So, with those last words, uh, let's give a hand to Mike and then we'll go downstairs. Thank you.